In this video, we're going to see how to prove the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, there are many proofs for the Pythagorean Theorem. If you recall, the Pythagorean Theorem deals with when we are in a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So, if you've ever wondered why it's true or wanted some explanation as to why it has to be true, here's one possible explanation. There are many, many more. This um, is sort of attributed to an Italian mathematician um, named Boscara. Uh, he lived in the 12th century. And it's a nice little geometric idea that high school students should um, have the skills to follow along with. Okay, so... What I have here is if I consider this square made up of four congruent right triangles. So these are right angles. And if I look at one of these right triangles, I'm talking about this triangle here. This is one of the four right triangles. Okay. I have one large square made up of four triangles, and one small square. So I want to, in this case, prove that in a right triangle with legs A, B, and hypotenuse C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm going to take this and say, okay, let's consider in this triangle that this short leg here is A, this long leg here is B, and the hypotenuse is C. Now, I'll address why the, the order you make these doesn't matter at the end, but C does have to be the hypotenuse, the side across from the right angle. So what I have is this. I have three areas to deal with. I have the area of the large square And notice that this is a C-wide and C-tall square, so this area is C-squared, C times C. I have the area of the triangle, and so the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. The base and height have to be two perpendicular measures, so I could have BBB, sure, and HBA, so one half BA. And then this is the one of the tricky ideas here. I need to find the area, I'll put it over here, the area of the small square, this one right in here. What you can notice is if from here to here is A. But this length here is B. What we have left for the side of this square will be B minus A. Because I have all of B if I took A away from it. So the area of the small square will be that side length squared. Because it's B minus A by B minus A. And I can expand that out multiply b times b get b squared b times negative a is negative ab negative a times b is negative ab so I get minus 2ab and then negative a times negative a is plus a squared okay now here's where the magic happens I know, and I'll, I'll, if I were actually going to write this proof, I would want to probably write this bit down. So, I know that the large square is made up of four triangles and one small square. 
And so I can take this and say, all right, I know that four of the triangles, so four times one half BA. And one of the small squares, so plus B squared minus 2AB plus A squared must equal the large squares area because if I have an area made up of five small areas, I add them up and I get the whole area. And the large squares area is C squared. And now with a little bit of algebra, 4 times 1 half is 2BA. I'll bring everything down here. B squared minus 2AB plus A squared equals C squared. And combine like terms. The 2AB and the 2BA, those are equivalent because multiplication is commutative, so those cancel out. I'll reorder this. So I have b squared plus a squared. Well, that's the same thing as a squared plus b squared. And that has to equal c squared. And so this has been proven. Okay, um, so the only possible shortcomings of this, there are two of them. So in my problem, I made a the shorter and b the longer. You say, okay, well, that doesn't need to be the case. What if this were b? and this were a. And what would happen is it would change this from b minus a to a minus b, but I would still get the same expression here, so that doesn't matter. The second possible shortcoming, what if a equals b? Well, if a equals b, we won't actually have a square. We'd have a square made up of four isosceles right triangles. But that doesn't matter either, because if I don't have a square, b minus a is zero, and it still holds. So this proof will work out and tell me why I know a squared plus b squared must equal c squared based on the sum of areas.